In today's clip, I will talk you through how I produce this portrait using a guideline method, using a reference image. I will also talk you through the resources I used. So let's get on with the tutorial. If you are using this tutorial purely for practicing the initial stages of drawing a portrait just to get the proportions in place, then really at this stage you only need a HB pencil and a rubber for rubbing out. However, if you are using this more to get a realistic portrait, to get all the tones, etc, etc, I would recommend certainly getting different grades of pencils and definitely get yourself a 6B, a 2B and a B to get the different shades. Me personally, I also have a mechanical pencil for getting the details, especially in the eyes. I have my zero mono eraser for getting into really tiny details like the eyes and for later on if I want to rub out details like the hair. I have my blending stump for getting blending on the skin tones and also a kneadable eraser. So let's get on with the tutorial. So the first thing you will need to do when sketching your face is draw a circle with a cross through it at the top of the page and this will represent the top of the head. You will then draw a square that reaches each of the corners of the circle and you will then start to sketch the outline of the face. Each of those lines within the circle indicate the top of the hairline the eyebrows and then the nose. And then we have a line here which is halfway down the face. I am now sketching in the lines of the eyes. When you draw eyes, they should, if you are drawing someone from the front, fit five ways across the face. So you have one eye to the left, an imaginary eye, then you have your eye which is your actual eye, then one eye's width in the middle, then your eye which is your actual eye, and then one eye's width to the right. So if you have a look at the face now, I would be able to fit five eyes within that face. As you can see around my eye shape I'm starting to sketch in with my mechanical pencil, the iris, the pupil, tear ducts, any lines around the eyes like the eyelids, um, just so I can get a rough idea of where everything is, the eyebrows, um, but not too much detail and tone. Because if I start sketching in and adding too much dark areas, it's going to be really difficult to rub those shapes out. So I'm just sketching them in really lightly, like I have sketched in my guidelines, so that if I need to make alterations later, which I will do, um, then it's going to be easy to rub them out. So as you can see, I have sketched two really light lines going from the centre of the eyes, the tear ducts. This is because on the majority of people, the nose should fall, the edge of the nose should fall where the centre of the eye is. So I've just drawn two really light guidelines to indicate where the edge of the nose is and where the pupil is, the centre of the eye. And this only works really when you're drawing someone from the face. So if you're starting out doing your portraits, I would suggest that you find a reference image of someone that is facing the front. So where the pupil is, if you draw a really light line down the centre of the face, that's where the edge of the lips should fall. And then you can start sketching your lips in. And the top of the lips should be just at the base of where that circle is. So I'm going to draw the eyes. Now on the reference image 
the ears appear higher than I would normally draw them. I would normally draw them at the base of the nose, but because I'm drawing from a reference image, I'm going by what I have in front of me. And I would suggest that when you have a reference image, say for example, the lips are narrower, or the nose is narrower or wider, I would always go by your reference. Just use these guidelines as a guide. But the ears are slightly higher. They would normally be more towards the base of the nose, but because they're higher, that's where I'm going to do them. And these lines are here to show you where everything is. So if you notice they're higher, do them higher. If you notice they're lower, do them lower, and that will indicate that someone's tipping their head down. So now I'm sketching in the hair. Um, the model has her hair up, so that's why I'm doing it in this style where her hair is up and there isn't any to the side. And I'm now going to sketch in the neck. So now I'm going in with the kneadable eraser and taking out all of those guidelines that I sketched really lightly so it's quite easy to take them out with the kneadable eraser um, and I'm going to start just going around adding some finishing touches, checking in, making sure that everything's in the right place before I start adding tone with a HB pencil. The reason I'm adding it with a HB pencil is I want to start light before I go in too dark with the B pencil. Now that I'm starting to shade in the skin tones, I am taking the HB pencil and using the overhand grip which is what I use when I am shading because it means that the shading marks are smoother and don't leave white gaps. If you would like to learn more about how to hold your pencil for drawing then please check out this clip above. There is also a clip in the Drawing for Beginners playlist which shows you all about shading for beginners and how to shade a shape to make it look 3D. If you feel that you could practice your shading skills, then please click on the card above and that will take you to the Shading for Beginners clip. So I'm now going to add tones directly underneath the chin and around the neck area. This area should always be darker because the shade from the face and the chin falls onto the neck and this makes it appear darker um, and you may even want to make it a little bit darker. I'm now going to go in with the blending stump to smooth out all of these areas to make the skin tone just appear that bit smoother.
So now I'm going to go in with my blending stump to even out the tone on the face. So for the darker areas around the face, I'm going to use a 6B pencil, which is the darkest pencil that I have to hand. This will just make sure that you have maximum impact with your tones. If you don't have a 6B pencil and you have maybe a 2 or a 4B, then I would suggest you use that. If you don't have any softer grades of pencils, that's fine. Just dig as hard as you can with your pencil to achieve a darkest tone as you can. If you would like to see in detail how to draw an eye, then please click on the link above and this will show you more in detail how to draw an eye. If you would like to find out more about drawing the lips in detail, then please click on this card above and it will take you directly to the clip. When shading the lips, you should always make sure that the top lip is darker than the bottom lip because the bottom lip hangs out slightly more so and that means that it catches more of the light. So now I'm going to move on to shading in the hair. Because this hair is very dark, I'm going to use a 6B pencil. I'm going to protect the rest of the face with a piece of paper because there are some soft pencil marks on the face. If I move across the face with my hand, then I could damage some of those marks and smudge them when I don't want to. So I'm covering it with a piece of paper and I'm going to shade with the side of my pencil with the overhand grip so that I can cover as much of the area as possible, but also I don't want to leave any gaps.
this clip then make sure you check out more clips like this in the portraits playlist don't forget to look in the description below for details of products used in today's clip and if you have any ideas for content or questions leave a comment below finally don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of future content and if you would like to see clips like this in full length then make sure you check out my patreon